May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Good morning, and a very warm welcome to all of you who have gathered here. It's great to have you join with me this morning as we gather to worship God, and I do hope you've had a blessed week so far. And it's good for those who will join us later on on our online worship service today, Um, and I thank you for joining with us again. So as we begin our worship this morning, remember this is a place of grace, not perfection, and everyone is welcome. So as we begin our worship this morning, let us still our hearts and minds, and let us come to God in prayer. Let us pray. Living God, as we prepare ourselves for worship, let us be open to your presence and experience the wonder and awe of your glory. As we sing your praises, as we read and listen to God's word, may we glimpse at the greatness of it all. And let us recognize the various characteristics of humanity and open our hearts and minds to all the folk we will encounter in church this morning. Let us have a greater insight to who we are and how people perceive our behavior and our actions. And may they see the goodness which is instilled on our hearts. So, living Lord, hear our prayers. Amen. So let us begin our worship this morning by singing our opening hymn, hymn number 608, Spirit of Truth and Grace. And if you're able, we'll stand to sing.
Let us come together in prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, our Creator and Provider, we come before you this morning to sing and sing your name. Your name that is heard throughout the land. Your name that is called out from the depths of despair. From mountain tops and high to those in solitude or those gathered in crowds. Wherever your people are, their voices and our voices will resound in harmony, calling out, praising and giving thanks that you, almighty God, cares, watches, protects each of your children wherever we are. Whatever situation they or we find ourselves in. For you are a God who upholds all those who fall down and lifts up all who are bowed down. And for this we sing and praise your name. Merciful and gracious God, you are a God who is slow to anger and quick to love. And you have compassion for all of your creation. You know what is in the hearts of your people. What we are yearning and seeking for. Yet without hesitation, without doubt, you give us those things that we are seeking for. Your hand is open with love and wisdom. And you are constantly watching and guiding us. Keeping us on the right path. Yet we, your children, so often doubt your capabilities. We so often question your timing, why it hasn't happened immediately after we cry out to you. We so often stray from the path that's set for us, yet still you watch over us. How often have we turned away and ignored the teachings from your word, for we know what is best. How often have we judged others because of their appearance, their backgrounds, and not opening our hearts to those who are in need, not sharing our faith with those who want to know you, Lord. So this morning, we come before you, bearing our mistakes upon our hearts. We come with words that have been spoken that has caused pain and discouragement for others upon our lips. We come with a slate that needs white clean to allow us to start afresh. So in this moment of silence, we seek your forgiveness and those words of forgiveness. Jesus says to those who seek genuine forgiveness, your sins are forgiven. Compassionate God, you are a God of new beginnings. You have wiped our slates clean again. And so we thank you once again for your forgiveness. And as we face this new week ahead, meet with us, be with us, and help us to live each day in the light of your presence. Give to us a constant awareness of your greatness and your love, so that whatever confronts us, whatever challenges we face, whatever situation we find ourselves in, we may be equipped to meet you in your name and to offer our lives of true discipleship pleasing in your sight. For who and what we are, we worship you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
Let us sing hymn number 710, I Have a Dream a Man Once Said. Our first reading this morning again comes from the book of Galatians, Galatians chapter 5, beginning at verse 16. So let's listen to God's word. Paul writes to the church of Galatia these words, and he says, What I say is this, let the Spirit direct your lives, and you will not satisfy the desires of the human nature. For what our human nature wants is opposed to what the Spirit wants. And what the Spirit wants is opposed to what our human nature wants. These two are enemies. And this means that you cannot do what you want to do. If the Spirit leads you, then you are not subject to the law. But the Spirit produces love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, humility, and self-control. There is no law against such things as these. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have put to death their human nature with all its passions and desires. The Spirit has given us life. He must also control our lives. We must not be proud or irritate one another or be jealous of one another. 
And our second reading comes from the Old Testament, from the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 43, beginning at verse 1. So again, let's listen to God's word. Isaiah writes, Israel, the Lord who created you says, Do not be afraid, I will save you. I have called you by name, you are mine. And when you pass through deep waters, I will be with you. Your troubles will not overwhelm you. When you pass through fire, you will not be burnt. The hard trials that come will not hurt you, for I am the Lord, your God, the holy God of Israel who saves you. And I will give up Egypt to set you free, and I will give up Ethiopia and Seba, and I will give up whole nations to save your life, because you are precious to me, and because I love you and give you honour. Do not be afraid, I am with you. From the distant east and the farthest west, I will bring your people home. I will tell the north to let them go and the south not to hold them back. Let my people return from distant lands, from every part of the world. They are my own people. And I created them to bring me glory. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We're going to pray again. And during our prayer of intercession, as again, Christine is going to play for us during our moment of silence. So let us pray. Almighty God, all we have comes from you. Our world so full of beauty, our lives so rich in blessings, our faith so laden with joy. And we thank you that you have called us into fellowship to be part of your people, not in isolation, but as members of your church a family united in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. In the same way you guided the people who gathered in numbers at the Lake of Galilee to share with each other not only what food they had, but also the love they felt. Guide us to share with one another. Not just our friends or our families or those we get on with, but all in our church family and the wider fellowship of the church. Guide us, for you are strong and mighty, and give us the courage to make that offer of concern and support. Loving Lord, we bring to you our thoughts and concerns of the people of our church and community those who are struggling at the moment, those who are unable to join us in worship for whatever reason. We think of those known to us facing difficult times, battling with illness, wrestling with depression, anxious about the future, grieving for loved ones, and those who feel the darkness of despair surrounding them, yet are longing for that flicker of light that will burst the cloud of darkness, that light of hope that will make some sense out of their confusion. Guiding Lord, we think of those who seek guidance, who feel unsure of the way ahead, uncertain of their ability to face that future, unclear as to what you want from them or what your plans for their lives are. Guide all those who ask you to lead the way forward 
yet still have no clear sense of their particular calling. Guide each of us to walk alongside them as they take those faltering steps. Let them share their fears and worries with us as we walk together. So loving God in this moment of silence, hear the names of the people that we are concerned for etched upon our hearts. loving God we ask all of this in the prayer that you taught us to say together our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We're going to remain seated, and again we're going to sing the hymn, Holy Spirit, Living Breath of
puesta. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, for you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. In the final scene of the movie Twister, an F5 tornado over a mile wide chases the two main characters, Bill and Joe, as they run for their lives. And they first seek safety in an old barn, but the fierce winds pick up the metal objects in the barn and hurl them through the air like knives. Next, they race to an old pump house and fasten themselves with leather straps to some pipes that go 30 feet underground. And when the tornado moves over them, it rips the pump house from its foundation and it carries it away in a swirling black mass. Then the twister tries to draw them upwards into its core, but as they cling desperately to the pipes, the leather straps keep them anchored to the earth and after the tornado finally passes the camera looks down on the scene from high in the air and although there is an enormous path of destruction many miles long and over a mile wide for some reason an old farmhouse stands alone and undisturbed and though this story is fictional I was reminded when watching it the other evening that that scene is much like the experiences we have throughout our own lives. Storms come and go. Bad things happen to good people. And wonderful, godly people experience tragedy. But for the believer of faith, there is peace. The Bible never promises that we will escape the storms of life. It does, however, promise us peace and protection in the midst of those storms. And as you know, peace is the third portion of the fruits of the Spirit which we are focusing on during the summertime, listed in the letter to the Galatians. And if we are honest, every one of us longs for peace. How often have we said, go away and give me peace and quiet. Let's have some peace around here. And when our son Adam was a toddler, we would often read to him the book by the children's author, Jill Murphy, Five Minutes Peace, which was about a fictional mum who just needed five minutes to have a cup of coffee without interruption from any of her children. I must confess on some occasions it did work for me in the house, but most of the time it was just lovely being able to sit to read for five minutes. However, I still have never drank a full cup of coffee, even to this day. But let's be realistic. Home life, family life is having to demand and manage, manage stresses and pressure at work that we have to endure. There are anxieties about life in the immediate or long-term future. And all the time, the bustle and the busyness of life swirls around, multiplied for many people by seemingly inescapable invasion of the internet, emails, social media, the cost of living crisis, the uncertainty in the job market, and now we're facing the fuel crisis. So it's no wonder we long for peace. Albeit even just five minutes, just to breathe and find peace of mind. So when it comes to the scriptures, peace is one of those huge words. In the Old Testament, it is a beautiful and complex word, shalom. In the New Testament, Jesus and Paul would have used the word peace many times every day in their customary greetings to other Jews. Peace be with you. And Jesus also promised his disciples, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. And that sense of peace that Jesus is offering means more than living a life with no conflict or being quiet, still and at rest. It is your calmness that a nation, a city, a community enjoys when it has a caring, competent and secure leaders. 
The great theologian William Barclay writes that in biblical times, villages had an official who was called the superintendent of the village, the keeper of public peace. Probably even within our own families, there will be someone who always tries to keep the peace, no matter what is happening. And I must confess, I do not like confrontation. I don't like conflict or people constantly at each other's throat. I don't like picking sides either. It is not who I am. I would rather walk away, find a compromise rather than face the situation. But don't get me wrong, I am not a pushover. I will stand firm if and when I have to. But my default position that I prefer is keeping the peace finding ways to work situations out which I know in ministry may be seen by others as a weak attribute but hey ho, God knows me and here I am but let's also remember that just because we call ourselves Christians means that life will not will be automatically filled with roses it doesn't sometimes it feels even harder remember that while in prison Paul wrote the letter of to the the letter of Galatians. He wrote, I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. He also goes on to write to the people of Philippi, the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And in the book of Isaiah, we see that the people of Israel have sinned greatly by following other gods and by seeking alliances with other powers instead of resting quietly on God. And this is why the people found themselves in exile in Babylon. So in the beginning of chapter 43, Isaiah writing, he says, but now the time of the exile was almost over and God was ready to bring his people to safety and security. Isaiah in his book, reveals to those in exile that the love and care of the one whose spirit lives in us continues and never falters. Peace in the storms of life is God's gift to his people. Peace is God's promise. When love, justice, truth and peace have a group hug and heaven and earth are in harmony. Peace, as Paul describes it, is a serious business. It is not just a happy, nice feeling. It is at the heart of the gospel of Jesus Christ and the glory of God. It is the heart of who we are as Christians. So when we fight and condemn one another, denounce other Christians and divide from them, fostering all kinds of divisions within the church, then we do not have the mind of Christ. We make a mockery of singing with one voice in our worship and deprive God of his glory. So as we journey to continue in faith, as we learn to depend on the Holy Spirit and understand that God will be with us in every situation, we will be more at rest and anxiety will be further away. However, we must not find a way to, to we must find a way, sorry, to not allow life's circumstances to take away our peace. As people of faith, we must be determined to cling to the promises of God so that our hearts and minds are guarded from worry. As one writer wrote, with time, with maturity, and a growing trust in God, we can learn to be content with whatever the situations and circumstances we face. So my friends, my brothers and sisters in Christ, whatever life brings you, whatever storms rage around you, Whatever you may be feeling, whatever situation you are facing, remember that the peace that Paul speaks of as one of the fruits of the Spirit is the peace 
that Jesus offers each one of us. It is a reminder to each one of us that we are not alone, that we can rest in the knowledge that God dearly loves us and will take care of us. And it is through our relationship with God that we may have peace. So may God's peace be a source of comfort to each and every one of you this week and for the coming weeks ahead. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, one true God, now and forevermore. Amen. We're now going to make our offering and as the offering is brought forward we'll remain seated and we'll sing praise God from whom all blessings flow. Let us pray. Living God, you are the author of life, the sustainer of hope and the teacher of truth. You are the giver of love to a broken world. Throughout the ages you have journeyed with your people, revealing yourself through stories and mystery. You have provided for their needs in desolate places. You have been their guide day and night. And as we gather for worship today, we celebrate your love for us and our love for each other. We praise you because you hear the cries of your people. We praise you for your Son, Jesus Christ. And we praise you for you bringing light into darkness, good out of evil, and that you transform our lives by the power of your mercy and compassion. So God of hope, we recognize that you provide all that we need. So in heartfelt response to your calling, accept our offerings. Increase our faith so that we may offer even the little we have, trusting in your faithfulness, power and grace for ourselves and for the needs of your world. So loving God, hear our prayers. Amen. Before we bring our service to a close, can I again thank you for joining with me here in the church for worship and then later on uh, as people watch our online service. It's good again to have you join with me and I do hope you have a blessed week. So now, my friends, we're going to bring our service to a close by singing a closing hymn, hymn number 646. Forth in the peace of Christ we go. Thank you.
So now go in peace and may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you, those whom you love and those whom you struggle to love, now and forevermore.